Today we're going to take a look at section 2.3. We're going to start it anyway. Um, and this section is titled Other Set Operations. Um, we really only encountered one set operation last time, and it's not exactly even a set operation, but we did encounter this idea of complements, right? Um, where we looked at one set and we looked at its complement inside of the universal set and described relationships between those two things. We're going to look at three set operations in section 2.3, and the first three are right off the bat. The first one is called a set intersection. And a set intersection is the set of all elements common to both sets. And then the set union is the set of all objects in one set or the other or both. And I want to show you both notationally and we'll talk about in terms of um, language what this looks like, what it means. So the intersection is an upside down U, or you can think of it as looking kind of like a, a lowercase n for intersection, okay? So we would write A, upside down U, intersect B. Notationally, this is the set of all items X, such that X is an element of A, and, that's the key word here, X is an element of B. And when we talk about a street intersection, this is exactly what we mean. So imagine out here on the corner, Kickapoo and MacArthur. The intersection is exactly where the streets cross one another, right? It's not, you know, three foot behind the crosswalk. That's not the intersection. You're approaching the intersection, you're not there. The intersection is exactly the portions of the street that lies on both of those streets. And that's what an intersection is for sets as well. I'd like to show you what a Venn diagram looks like for this. All right, so it has that rectangle that we saw before. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw two circles inside. But the last sets that we did, one circle was contained inside of another circle. A more general way of describing sets is that they sometimes overlap like this. Okay? So if we're taking a look at these sets, set A is on the left, set B is on the right, what portion of this picture is the intersection? Yeah, that overlapping place in the middle. That's not quite dark enough, I don't think. No, well, that's almost dark enough. <coughs> How about that? That's the intersection of a Venn diagram. Okay? All right, a union. Union actually looks like a U. Isn't that friendly? A U B. A union B. This is the set of all X such that X is an element of A, or, and that's our operative word, X is an element of B. And if it's an element of both, fantastic. That works too. Okay? No problem. This is what we mean when we, uh, when we get married. And the pastor says, and the two shall become one. And it means that you get all my stuff and I get all your stuff. It's a union. Right? There's no more of yours and mine. It's all ours. Emily? It's about sets instead of it being about statements, but it's the same idea, mm -hmm. exactly the same idea from logic. Now, in terms of a Venn diagram, we're going to draw that same Venn diagram we had above, these overlapping circles. Sorry, I'm sort of running out of space over here. I should have drawn it on the right-hand side. But you have these overlapping circles. Uh, here is A. Here is B. The union is everything, okay? So we get everything in circle A, we get everything in circle B, and we get the overlap that's in both circles A and B. So the union is this idea of we get, we get it all, okay? We get any children you had from before, <laughs> any debt that you had from before, and any money you had from before, properties, you get it everything, right? It's the union of what's going on. So like, you get it all. And I know we'll probably do examples of these, but would it be like if they share common numbers or like? That would be part of it. But if you're doing a union, it's not just the common things. It's, it's everything. everything. But like with the intersection, it's going to be common numbers. Mm -hmm. So it's like if both sets have a three, then they're, they're, <coughs> they're in the intersection. intersection. Yeah. Right. How can you tell the difference between an intersection and a union? At first, it's intersection. Okay, intersection. 
Okay, so an intersection is going to be the common items, but the union is going to be all of the items. You get everything. Let's try an example and see if it clears some of those questions up too. Um, oh, I'm sorry, one more definition before we get to the example. I apologize. Relative difference. A relative difference is the set of all elements in one set that are not in the other. It kind of looks like subtraction when we write this one down. It looks like A minus B. And this is the set of all items X, such that X is in A, but X is not in B. It's in the first set, not in the second set. Picture. Here's set A, here's set B. It's got to be in A, but not in B. Where's that picture going to be? Right, over here, just like Leah said. The left-hand part of circle A. Now, be real clear, it has to be in A. So don't go shading outside of circle A at all. It's not appropriate. It's got to be in A first and foremost, and then we remove the portion that it has in common with B. So we remove the intersection part of it is what really happens. Okay. This works fantastic for the next example. Consider Mary, single mom to one child, Mark, and Joe, single dad to two children, Jack and Jill. Mark. I'm sorry, Mary, not Mark. Mary and Joe get married. Together they have two children, Anne and Andy. We're going to let the capital set M describe Mary's kids and capital set Joe describe Joe's kids. And we're going to think about this like, I mean, biological kids, okay? So that's the word I'm going to use. I'm not trying to make an argument that they aren't all everybody's kids, okay? But just that we're going to describe this in terms of biological kids. We're going to find the following. What is the intersection of M and J? This would be Ann and Andy. So these are the kids they have in common, right? The ones that they had together after they got married is the description we have here. It's Ann and Andy. What would M union J mean? Everybody's kids. This is the picture that we have when we do the family picture, right? Yeah. This is everybody gets to be included. This is the family picture. So this is all kids. Combined. So who who does that give us? We've got a lot of kids here. Mark. Mark. Yeah, I should have. <laughs> They've got five kids. M minus J. What would that mean? Uh, yeah, it would be the kids she had from before, right? So this is Mary's kids only. Not the ones they share, but the one that she has to evidently share with some other ex somebody, right? That's the one we're talking about. That's Mark. Or maybe not an ex. Maybe her first husband died. Let's go with that. Okay. Does that make sense? So we have this way of sort of distinguishing who we're talking about with unions and intersections. Um, and it's just the language that we're using to describe them. All right, some set properties. The first set property we're going to talk about is commutativity. The second one is associativity, and the third one is distribution. So set commutativity says the following. For all sets A and B, A intersect B is the same as B intersect A. 
That makes sense, right? We talk about the intersection of Kickapoo and MacArthur. We talk about the intersection of MacArthur and Kickapoo. It's the same thing. No different. Union. A union B is the same thing as B union A. We take all my stuff and we union it with all my husband's stuff. It's the same thing if we start with his stuff and then we union it with mine. It's all the same. So those are commutative operations. The next one is for sets A, B, C. These are all sets. That's actually the operative word there for all sets A, B, C. If we take A intersect B intersect C, that's the same thing as A intersect B intersect C. We can do it with unions. A union B union C is the same as A union B union C. So if we're unioning, um, I'm sorry, let's do the intersection first. Um, if you're intersecting three lines all together and they're all crossing at the same location, right? So imagine that you're doing like, let me draw it. These three, those two, and then we do a third one through the middle. It doesn't matter which two we consider first, right? Consider the first two I drew the third one, or you consider one of the first ones I drew with the, with the last one, and we go in different, it doesn't make any difference. Okay, you get the same intersection spot when you're done. Same thing's true on the last one. When you take a look at union, right? If we um, talk about having, say, three bank accounts and we want to know how much money is in all of them. Okay, well, so let's take bank account A and bank account B, how much money is in them, and then we can add in bank account C. It doesn't matter if I did those in a different order. It would be the same thing, right? All the monies would still be there. The ordering doesn't make any difference. And the last one is the distribution, and that is the way that we can combine the ideas of union and intersection together. So this is, again, for all sets A, B, C. If you take A intersect B union C, this is the same as A intersect B, and then union that with A intersect C. I think you probably can see pretty quickly why it's called the uh, distribution property, right? It looks like you're sort of distributing the A across somehow, the set of parentheses. Um, and this is saying that if we took B union C, imagine it in a Venn diagram, it's this big picture there where we get everything in these three components of these circles, right? And then you find that piece and where it intersects with A, that's going to be this small area. If you had done it in the other order and you'd found the intersection of each of them first and then union that together, you would get the same picture, the same set. Then our last one is a relationship of the cardinal number formula. And I will show you this with a Venn diagram as a justification for why it works. Remember we talked about putting the N in front of a set means the number of items in it, right? That's what it means for being cardinal number, number of items. If we have A union B, this is the number of items in A plus the number of items in set B. And we actually have to subtract off the number of items in the intersection. It might feel a little bit counterintuitive, but watch and I'll show you why it works. No, this is an N for number, so cardinal all, number. All okay. Yes, those are all Ns, and the second one doesn't look so good, but they should look like they have that, you know, okay. like that, the sticking up part like that on them. Um, and another reason that they would have to be aerial is because the intersection would actually have to have a set in front and a set behind in so order for it to make any sense. They're all oh, yes. Ns okay. except yeah. for the one. Right. The only way that it makes sense to be talking about an intersection is if there's a set before the symbol and there's a set after the symbol. Otherwise, we don't have an intersection. Okay. Yeah. 
So if I told you something like, you know, it's in that intersection, you'd be like, well, intersection where? All right, think about like driving. What intersection? Unless you tell me two streets, I'm not going to arrive at the right place, right? Same thing. Okay, so let's take a look at this Venn diagram. What I'm trying to find is I'm trying to find how many items are contained inside of all of the, the overlapping circle parts, right? The part that overlaps and the part that's in each individual one because union is supposed to be all of this stuff, correct? We get it all. So the question then is how do I add those pieces together? Well, this is telling us what we could do is we could add A, all the items in set A. So I color those in pink. Um, and then I could add all of the items in set B. And what do you notice happened? I counted the overlap twice, right? I counted it when I shaded it in pink, and I counted it when I shaded it in blue. That's why you see on the end of this formula the removal of the overlap, because I counted it twice. That's where this formula is coming from. We're removing the double count. We've removed double counts before, <laughs> this semester even, right? So we're going to remove them again. All right, there is one more um, type of set operation, and it's called a Cartesian product. So we'll do this example or do this notation, and then we'll stop for today. The Cartesian pro product is the set of all ordered pairs such that the first component comes from the first set and the second component comes from the second set. Fill in those blanks, and then I'm going to give you an example. is the letters X, Y, Z. And let's say that set B is the numbers 1, 2. It could also be X's and Y's. It doesn't matter what they are. I'm just going to give you one example of such a thing. What this is saying when I do the Cartesian product, and I haven't told you what the notation is for that, the Cartesian product looks like a multiplication X, A, X, B. But wait, we're not multiplying, okay? but that's coming from the word product, Cartesian product. So this is a set, and it's a set of what? What did the, direct, what did the definition say? It's a set of what? Ordered pairs. So what I'm going to have is I'm going to have ordered pairs in my set. They aren't going to be single elements. They're going to be ordered pairs, like this. They're ordered pairs such that the first component comes from the first set. So that would be like X. And the second component comes from the second set, so that would be like 1. Right? But if I can, com if I can pair up X with 1, I can also pair up X with 2. But I don't have to have X. I could have Y, and I could pair Y up with 1 or y up with 2, or I could pair up z1 and z2. So it's kind of yeah, it is kind of like a matrices. It's also kind of like um, something else you've seen. Not everybody probably has seen matrices, but what else have you seen that's like this? Um, we did something similar with it on one example, I think, with ratios is what I think you're thinking of, yeah. You guys have seen this happen before this. It's yeah, it's graphing, right? It's x, y coordinate axis. It's what we call the Cartesian plane, which this is called the what? Cartesian product, okay? So this is the language is similar here. Um, I would like for you to notice something that's interesting and, um, and it's useful, but I don't want it to confuse you because sometimes that's what ends up happening is you guys remember what I'm about to tell you. Note, and you don't remember what I just already told you before that. How many items are in set A? Three. How many items are in set B? 
two. Okay, so everybody good so far? Remember that N of A means number of items. Number of items set A is three. Number of items in set B is two. What is the number of items in their cross product? It's six. Remember, it's the ordered pairs. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six ordered pairs. What's the relationship here? Here is a multiplication relationship. The number of items in A cross B is the number of items in set A times the number of items in set B. Now, if I ask you how many items something is, you can multiply the values. If I ask you what is the, cross pro the uh, Cartesian product, it should be a list of ordered <coughs> pairs. Don't tell me A cross B is 6. It isn't n of a cross b is 6. Do you guys see the difference? Make sure the notation you're asked for is either the cardinal number, n of, or not, in which case you're writing out the elements of the set. And we will pick back up here next time.